Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Family Law Talk, presented by Kirk Stangy of Stangy Law Firm, PC. Stangy Law Firm is a family law firm in the St. Louis metro area with offices in Missouri and Illinois. Now, here's your host, Kirk Stangy. Welcome to Family Law Talk. My name is Kirk Stangy, and I am a managing partner of Stangy Law Firm, which is a family law firm with multiple offices in the St. Louis metro area in Missouri and Illinois. Well, welcome today to uh, the episode with Family Law Talk with Stangy Law Firm. We have an interesting topic, and the topic is about expert witnesses. The title of the episode today is Expert Witnesses Can Play an Important Role in Family Law. Uh, we're going to get to that topic here in just a minute, but I'll state, as I always do, that the choice of a lawyer is an important decision that should not be based solely upon advertisements and that the information you obtain today in this episode is general in nature and it may not apply to specific factual or legal circumstance. Therefore, if you need legal advice, you should definitely consult an attorney who's licensed and competent to practice law in your specific jurisdiction. All right, so on to the topic. Again, the topic today is about expert witnesses. Uh, expert witnesses can play a vital role in a divorce case, in a family law case, a child custody case, I mean, you name the type of family law case, expert witnesses can play a critical role. And this is often overlooked by most parties going through a divorce or family law case. I think to to a lot of folks out there that aren't attorneys or confused by this whole concept, uh, it's hard for them to see the necessity of expert witnesses. And so that's the topic today. And obviously we can't go through every possible expert uh, that could be important in a family law divorce case, but we'll try to go through uh, some of the more common ones. Uh, and these are definitely some of the more common ones we see at our firm in terms of family law cases. And we'll try to just kind of scrape the surface today uh, to give you all uh, some general background on, on what these witnesses might be able to provide in certain types of cases. And I'll just state this as well as a follow-up to the episode today. You can go to our blog, familylawheadquarters.com, uh, look at the article uh, uh, it's dated November 3rd, 2014, and the article is uh, titled Expert Witnesses, an Important Facet of Many Cases. And you can read that as a follow-up to the episode today. You can also find a link uh, to this article in the hyperlink below today's episode if you're at blogtalkradio.com. Uh, but, but here is kind of the gist of it, and here's uh, one of the most important parts about expert witnesses in terms of cases in general, which is that an expert witness, if they're qualified, in other words, if they you know, have the credentials, if they have the education, the skills, or the experience to be a, quote, expert, then they are allowed to give what's called opinion testimony in court. Uh, lots of folks often have the idea, and, uh, you know, we see this quite a bit, and a lot of uh, clients or parties kind of have this idea. In other words, maybe it'll be a custody case, and they think, you know, I'm going to bring grandma and grandpa in, and grandma and grandpa can give their opinion to the court about maybe where a kid should live, um, uh, uh, something of that uh, venue. And, and when somebody does that, I mean, that's what's called an opinion testimony. In other words, if grandma or grandpa were allowed to be asked, who do you think uh, this child should reside with? Should this child reside uh, uh, with the mom or the dad, and uh, if, if grandma or grandpa would, would be allowed to give that testimony, that's called opinion testimony, right? That's somebody giving their opinion. And an opinion should be contrasted with simply a witness testifying to facts. So certainly a grandfather or grandmother can testify all day long about what they've seen, you know, with their own eyes. Uh, they can testify to what they've heard. Uh, I mean, these are fact witness type issues, um, and there's no problem with that whatsoever. But once you delve into asking a lay witness, a grandfather, or grandmother, for example, who they think a child should live with, that's an opinion question. And really, um, uh, with most judges, that's not going to be allowed because you, versus a asking for facts, you're asking for uh, an opinion of that grandfather, or grandmother that really. Uh, it might be, you know, an opinion that they hold, but they're really not qualified to give that type of testimony. In other words, they're not a, a child psychologist, uh, for example. They're not a social worker even. They don't have the skills or credentials to give that type of testimony in front of a, uh, in front of a, a, a judge or in a courtroom. And so that's when expert witnesses can come into play because expert witnesses, if they have the skills, the qualifications, uh, the credentials, and the experience, uh, then they can uh, give opinion-type questions in a courtroom. And these opinion-type uh, answers to question can play critical roles 
in helping determine what a family court judge does uh, in terms of rendering a judgment a case. So let's let's give some specific examples. I just gave you one right there, but let's give some more specific examples of certain types uh, of experts that are out there uh, that can often become important in terms of a family law case. Uh, the first one we have on the list is appraisers. Uh, in lots of cases, the value of a home can be a critical issue. In other words, what is a home worth? What is the value of it? Well, generally speaking, you need an appraiser to testify uh, to the value of, uh, of a home. In some states, uh, there's some case law that indicates that an owner of a home, uh, if they have a basis to base their opinion on, might be able to testify, and in this singular instance, might be able to give their opinion, but it's generally not very credible uh, even if they're allowed uh, to give it. So an appraiser uh, can do an appraisal uh, if they're a licensed appraiser and they have the skills, credential, and experience to do this. And, and, and they're allowed, in most cases, to do uh, an appraisal report and then testify in court in terms of what their opinion is to the value of the home. Uh, in some cases, a business can be a big issue. Uh, somebody owns a business, it's a closely held family business, for example, uh, and the value of that business becomes a critical issue in terms of dividing property and debt. Well, there, a business evaluator uh, could play a critical role in terms of uh, valuing that business in terms of what its fair market value would be if offered to a willing buyer. So, again, with businesses, an appraiser can be important. Then you take other types of assets like jewelry, you know, sometimes you need an appraiser who appraises jewelry and what the value of that jewelry might be. That could be an important issue in a case. In terms of automobiles, you know, a lot of people used to go into Kelly Blue Book, Edmonds online, and, and punching in the year, make, model of the vehicle and the condition it's in and the features and trying to get evaluation on it. But, I mean, generally speaking, that's not going to be allowed in court. Uh, punching info on a web page and try to print that info and bring it in. If the value of a car was a critical issue and the parties have different viewpoints on it, uh, in all actuality, uh, uh, you would need an appraiser to appraise the value of that vehicle and come into court and testify to it. Now, that said, with automobiles, oftentimes both the parties might be able to stipulate the value and, and that wouldn't be necessary. But in certain cases, if you're dealing with particularly expensive automobiles, maybe classic automobiles, which could have some unique value, then uh, an appraiser could uh, play a critical role there. So think about appraisals in, in family law cases. When it when it comes to dividing property and debt in an equitable division state, what the court has to do is divide uh, the marital property and the marital debt in a just manner. And the key term is just. In Missouri, the statute doesn't say, you know, 50-50, for example. It says uh, marital property and marital debt to be divided in a just manner. But the truth is, for a court to, uh, to to divide marital property debt in a just manner, they really need to know what the value of it is. So appraisers can play a big, big role. Uh, in some cases, forensic accountants uh, can be key in terms of a family law case. So let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, in, in lots of cases, parties come into a marriage and they have uh, assets that they're bringing in, for example. So maybe they had investment accounts, maybe they had bank account money, uh, maybe they owned a home uh, prior to marriage. Maybe they owned a business interest prior to marriage, for example. And then in a lot of cases, what then ends up happening is over time, the assets brought into the marriage become commingled with marital assets. So let's say a party had a bank account uh, before marriage, and then money starts being put in that account after marriage, right? Let's say a business is worth X at the start of a marriage, but let's say due to some of the contributions of the other spouse, the value turns out to be Y. In other words, it goes up uh, in value. It could be a home was worth X on on a certain date, for example, uh, and then maybe through some of the funds of the other party, something to that extent, the mortgage was paid down on some level, uh, and that could be a, a unique issue in a case. Well, the forensic accountant, you know, I could give all kinds of examples, but a forensic accountant can be useful uh, in a family law case, but what, because what a forensic accountant can do in some cases is trace out the separate assets. So in situations where the marital and the separate become so commingled, it seems almost impossible to determine at a certain point in time what was uh, what was premarital, what was accumulated after the marriage. Well, in those cases, 
a forensic accountant can play a pretty key role in terms of family law case. Additionally, uh, you know, forensic accountants uh, uh, can help as it relates to businesses. I know I referenced a business uh, evaluation earlier, but uh, the role of the forensic accountant often can be critical in terms of helping evaluate a business. So, you know, there's cases to think about uh, the usefulness of a, of a forensic accountant that can play a key, key role. I've seen uh, cases uh, additionally uh, where maybe prenuptial agreements and you have unique clauses that have to be interpreted in terms of division of assets according to prenuptial agreements because the prenuptial agreement can often have uh, provisions or clauses that don't necessarily mirror what a family uh, a court would do uh, just in terms of handling a divorce case in and of itself. So take a case that states uh, percentages that, I mean, I've seen particular cases where you have percentages in terms of prenuptial agreements. In other words, if the marriage lasts from X years to X years, then wife is entitled to X percent of the assets. Well, in a case like that, a forensic accountant could play a key role in helping look at the assets and uh, helping determine an appropriate division of the marital assets. So think about forensic accountants. They can be very key in a lot of family law cases. And, and again, they're allowed to testify as to their opinion, unlike a lay witness. Uh, in some cases, psychologists can play a pretty, cool, pretty critical condition in terms of a family law case. Um, in some cases, a party might allege uh, that a parent in a custody case has a mental health condition uh, that could, realistically speaking, have an effect on child custody. Well, parties really can't come into court and testify that they think the other parent has a psychological condition or a mental health condition. I mean, again, that might be their opinion that there's some issue there, um, but unless they're trained as a psychologist or psychiatrist, uh, they really can't come into court and just give their opinion uh, from that realm. They might be able to come in and testify to things they've seen and heard. So if somebody's behavior has been unusual, for example, they could testify to that unusual behavior. But in terms of testifying to the ultimate conclusion that you know the other parent has X, Y, or Z mental health condition, uh, you really need an expert a witness in order to get there, and that's where a psychologist can play a key role. Uh, in some cases, psychologists uh, do what's called child custody evaluations. So I've seen uh, some severe uh, child custody situations over the years where maybe one parent alleges uh, that there's parental alienation out there, uh, where, in other words, the kids have been over time either overtly or subtly uh, been alienated from the other parent and made to think that the other parent isn't a good person, doesn't have their best interest in mind, et cetera. Uh, and then on the flip end, there's some cases kind of the counter to parental alienation is what's called realistic estrangement, uh, where one party alleges that the behavior of one of the parents has been so severe, uh, so unusual that there's not parental alienation, but that their unusual behavior is what has estranged the kids from them. Uh, either way, no matter what end of the spectrum a particular party thinks uh, might be the case in their unique situation. This is where a psychologist can play a key role. The psychologist can help get to the bottom of an issue like this, and they can ultimately give the court their opinion in terms of the situation and in terms of whether there's parental alienation or realistic estrangement or not. And, in fact, a child custody evaluator in a lot of cases uh, can also render their opinion to the court in terms of what might be in the best interest of children in a custody case. Again, it doesn't mean a judge has to accept it, just like a judge doesn't have to accept the opinion of a forensic accountant or an appraiser, but they can at least offer their opinion to the court uh, to help the court in terms of making an evaluation. So think psychologists. They can play a key role in family law cases. Uh, next on the list, I have vocational experts being listed. Uh, they are often overlooked by a lot of parties, uh, but a vocational expert can be very useful in spousal support cases. Uh, they can also be helpful in terms of determining child support. Uh, there are just lots of cases where the issue of underemployment comes into play. So we've seen lots of cases where maybe somebody doesn't have a job. Uh, they're not employed, uh, but the other party believes that if they made good faith and dil diligent efforts uh, to become employed, that they could make that happen and they could make a sufficient income. And so, you know, one party might allege that the other party's income should be imputed, in other words, brought up from what it actually is uh, based on their ability uh, to become employed. 
Well, a vocational expert can help in that regard. And the same issue can also come into play in terms of child support, in terms of what income to put on a child support worksheet in Missouri. It's a Form 14. Uh, and so a vocational expert can be key. And what, what they often do, and different vocational experts have different you know, methods, just like other appraisers have different methods of getting there, but their ultimate goal is determining uh, if an individual sought full-time employment, uh, made good faith efforts, uh, what's an income range in terms of what they could make from a high to low to middle. And a vocational expert, like I said, can be really critical in cases uh, because oftentimes, again, what a party is actually making isn't what they could make if they put uh, uh, really hard work into becoming employed. In other cases, medical experts can become key. Uh, and, in, and in terms of medical experts, I'm, I'm differentiating this from psychologists, uh, which I referenced before, uh, but in some cases, a party might have a medical condition, for example, that uh, makes it impossible for them to maintain full-time employment. Um, so, you know, one person can't work, they're unable to work. Uh, that could be a key issue, and that could become critical in terms of uh, spousal support or child support. And again, uh, you know, to really testify about uh, medical conditions and w what somebody's been diagnosed with, again, a medical expert is generally going to be needed unless the parties can stipulate uh, to that specific issue. Sometimes you can get it in with medical reports as well, uh, but again, oftentimes just having a medical expert either come into court and testify or be deposed uh, can be a particularly useful thing. Additionally, uh, there are cases uh, in child custody where a medical condition could play an important role. It could be relative to a medical condition that maybe the kids have or a kid has, uh, in some cases, a child um, could have, you know, various uh, 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 medical issues that could become important. That could be, you know, really a wide range of issues in terms of things we see. ADD, ADHD seems to be the big issue that we see a lot of. In some cases, a child could be maybe autistic, uh, for example. Uh, we've certainly seen cases from that realm. Uh, but in these types of cases, again, people can try to testify to their opinion, but it's often problematic, and that's why uh, it, it's really critical that parties going through a family law case think about medical experts in terms of the role that they might be able to play in a case. So, you know, in saying all this, lots of parties don't like to use uh, experts. Obviously, experts cost money, and that can be a tough thing when you're already playing, paying an attorney fee bill and then think about having to pay additional money uh, for an expert in a case, but these experts in lots of situations can really have a huge impact on a case. Uh, they can really help provide a judge uh, the information they need to make the best possible decision in, in terms of the case itself. And, and I would just say this as well. Oftentimes people have two uh, different viewpoints. So, I mean, take appraisers. You know, people might have unreasonable viewpoints about what something might be worth, but ha actually having an appraisal uh, done can be useful, can help a lot of parties settle their cases. Uh, if people have different viewpoints, you know, on a business and what that might be worth, actually having it evaluated can be useful. You know, if a party thinks there's parental alienation or realistic estrangement, having a psychologist look at that, for example, could be useful. You know, in cases where one party thinks that the other could make uh, a full-time employment a possibility and they could make an income to support themselves, actually putting that matter in the hands of a vocational expert and having them help determine it can be a useful thing. And same with medical experts as well. So you know, for the listeners out there, think about experts. Uh, certainly if you have an attorney helping you on your case, it would be a useful thing to consult with your attorney just to make sure that uh, you've got all the experts needed in order to uh, present the judge with, with really the, the information they need to make the best possible decision. So that is the episode today. Again, as a follow-up to the episode today, you can go to familylawheadquarters.com, uh, check out the article dated November 3, 2014. The title of the article is Expert Witnesses, an Important Facet of Many Cases. All right, well, that concludes the episode today. Thanks for all the listeners for tuning in with Family Law Talk with Stangy Law Firm. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to Family Law Talk with Kirk Stangy. Visit StangyLawFirm.com for more about today's topic or to put Stangy Law Firm to work for your family today.
Between aging and busy lifestyles, many women struggle with maintaining their physical and mental wellness. At Aquavita Concierge Healthcare Services for Women, we can help you revitalize your health and reclaim your life. We start from within by balancing your hormones, allowing your body to achieve and maintain desired weight goals. We also specialize in peptide therapies, regenerative medicine, sexual health, and aesthetics in our state-of-the-art facilities. Feel better, look better, live better. At Aquavita, visit aquavitality.com and begin your journey today. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.